Thank you for the introduction and, and thank you for the invite. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, this is a quite a, a, it's been a really fun talk to put together because uh, NFCore, this project which was introduced by Paolo, uh, really is a product of last year's hackathon. Um, and so uh, it's a lot of fun to come here and kind of see, give a progress update and say, say, uh, say how far we've come in that year. Um, out of interest, how many people were here last year? <laughs> All right. You missed everyone else. You missed the <laughs> a great hackathon. Uh, I'll give you a quick run through of, of, of what happened last year um, for those who missed it. Um, I gave a talk <laughs> uh, where I talked about where I work. So I work at SciLife Lab in Sweden, which is like a national platform. It's a collaboration before four, between four different universities uh, in Sweden, and we provide services across all of molecular biology to all research groups within Sweden. Uh, specifically, I work within one platform within SciLife Lab, which is a genomics infrastructure. And so we basically try to collect sequencing power, which we can then use for all research groups. And as well as just doing a sequencing, we also do different library preps as a service and some limited bioinformatics um, analysis. Um, and we kind of do that in, in such a way that our cost <coughs> costs are covered and the research groups just pay for the consumables. Um, so we've been using Nextflow for... Uh, a few years now um, as, as our primary tool for doing all the different pipelines we, we do. Uh, last year I talked about some of the best practices. I used liberal use of ridiculous memes um, <laughs> and, and hopefully gave tips about things which today will hopefully be common, um, common sense for many of you, things like using containers. Uh, but when I gave this talk last year we were just switching con to containers from environment modules and things. So the next flow field moves really quickly. Um, and I pointed out that we had lots of different analysis pipelines that we'd generated um, at SciLife Lab. The first one and, and the most frequently used was the RNA pipeline, uh, which we, we've been using in production for a couple of years now and done many tens of thousands of samples. Uh, we have this, what was then called the Cancer Analysis Workflow, is now being rebranded to SARAC. Um, and we had a whole host of other pipelines coming online for different types of data. Um, and what happened after I gave this talk was I, I started chatting more and more to the people I met at this meeting. Um, some of them you might recognize, <laughs> some of them in the audience. Uh, and especially uh, Alex and Andreas um, met me after coffee and we were kind of saying, well, actually, we're all working at similar kinds of groups, uh, kind of sequencing NGS centers in different countries, in Germany and, and um, Singapore. And what we really want is we want a single set of analysis pipelines for genomics, for, because that's where I work. And we want these pipelines to be open source, uh, to be kind of fully featured. You can support lots of things with Nextflow, but if you don't need to support all of them in your institute, chances are your pipeline doesn't support all of those things. But we wanted our pipelines to support everything they could. Um, we wanted them to be consistent between one another, uh, and we wanted them to be well documented. And actually, shortly after... Um, the next day meeting, um, Alex and I started collaborating on some of our NGI pipelines and even suggested bringing a pipeline that Alex had written into a SciLife Lab NGI branding, which all kind of seemed a little bit ridiculous. And so but basically NF Core was born. We said, okay, this idea of ca having multi-group collaborations on sets of analysis pipelines is going to be really helpful. Uh, we're all working towards the same goal. Let's get rid of any branding specific to our institutes. Let's make it easier for other people to use them uh, so people don't have to fork just to change the logo. Um, and we came up with a somewhat dubious name, NF Core, because we're all core genomics groups. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what is NF Core? I mean, for me, NF Core is three things, really. Um, primarily, it's a user community. It's kind of you guys. It's everyone sat in this room. Um, it's for emails, it's for chat boards, it's the, uh, it's the GitHub community. Um, and that's, that's what <coughs> drives all of NF Core. And, and the goal that we're all going towards is to have this collection of high quality workflows which could be used by anybody, anywhere. Um, and it quickly became obvious that in order to do this, it'd be useful to have a kind of a collection of helper tools. So along the way, as we've needed them, we've been kind of co-developing uh, these helper tools, which are totally separate from Nextflow, but just make our lives easier as developers. Um, on the community side, we st I started off by creating this GitHub organization. 
uh, made a website, then realized that Twitter can't have hyphens, so I used an underscore, and then realized that Docker Hub can't have any punctuation. <laughs> so take my advice, be careful when you choose a name. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I was completely amazed at the uptake. Uh, we started off with a handful of people from the hackathon last year, uh, and it kind of got, got rolling slowly over some discussions. And basically, as soon as Paolo started retweeting the tweets from NFCore, um, suddenly there were a lot of people interested, and, uh, and it's really scaled really quickly. Um, this is from a website uh, yesterday, I think it was. Um, was. If you go on the website, you'll see a little map listing all the contributors who have, who have told, told us about themselves. Uh, and there's 12 different institutions and 38 people have, have requested to be a member of a GitHub organization. And I've given talks about NFCore a few times this year, and every time I have to update this slide, and uh, that gives me a feeling of the trajectory of this, and it's really growing at a phenomenal rate. It's fantastic to see. Um, like I say, Twitter has been a big driver of that, certainly. We've got lots of, lots of Twitter followers, and, uh, and the website has uh, many, many more people looking at it than... than uh, would be otherwise indicated by this map. People in the US, um, there's got a bit of a European bias at the moment, so uh, it would be nice to get some more pins over there and other places on the map. Um, so those pins represent lots of different people, lots of different institutes. These are the logos that have been submitted so far. Again, I'm sure there are other groups out there who are involved in the NFCore, but, uh, and if, you, if you're interested, it's super easy to join up. You just, I'll mention it at the end, but basically you just tell us who you are and and then you can kind of submit a pull request with your logo, and next time I give this talk, I'll have to add that to this slide as well. Uh, this is the website. It's the uh, Reunion Islands uh, domain name, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> uh, and uh, the homepage tells you what it's all about and says some of the main kind of core tenants of all the pipelines which are there and how to get started. Uh, and what most people will be interested in is kind of pressing this big button in the middle. Um, and that takes you onto the pipelines page. And I didn't update this. I meant to update this last night. This is now 18 pipelines, I think. And I think we have six released. Maybe someone in the audience can correct me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so here, this is just pulling directly from GitHub, basically, and listing all the different pipelines. And you can type in keywords here, which, which um, search through these different things. And you can find the ones you're interested in. Um, I'm pleased to say, and it's slightly unexpected, but these aren't even all genomics pipelines. We have some protein um, proteomics pipelines, which have been recently added. Um, we have EGA, which is an ancient DNA. We've got RNA. We've got epigenetics. We've got quite a broad spectrum of different pipelines here, um, which is great. Um, the helper tools, if you follow the link at the top, it's basically one package. It's written in Python, so sorry about that. It's just I'm... <laughs> Horrible at writing groovy, so <laughs> I can do pipelines, but that's about it. Um, and so it's just a pip install uh, or conda install for this little command line tool, which just does a few things. Uh, and this page tells you about the different features. And I'll go into a couple of these um, with some demos in, in a minute. So that's kind of how it looks as a user. Um, if you're new to Nextflow, there's a bunch of documentation on there. We, um, we had a couple of people who are new to Nextflow who took uh, some of Paolo Evans' tutorial work and rewrote it a bit more. And so stuff like that, which is great, hopefully, if you're a user to get you started with the pipelines. But what if you're a developer and you want to add a new pipeline uh, that you've, you've written or you, that you want to write? How does that work? Um, probably the most important thing about keeping NFCore maintainable and, and consistent is this strict set of guidelines. Uh, most of them are pretty obvious, hopefully, but it has to be in Nextflow. Um, snake makes not allowed. <laughs> uh, open source um, has to have Docker um, and preferably Bioconda, if possible. We've been, wherever, wherever packages have been missing from Bioconda, which we need, we've been trying to package them ourselves into Bioconda, so helping that effort. Um, inevitably, there are some cases where this is impossible, but where possible, we always try and use Bioconda. Um, and if you look in the repositories, you'll see that uh, most of the pipelines, the, the Docker support really is just a single conda install command. Um, so everything is really run through Bioconda, which is fantastic, really easy to maintain. Uh, we have some basic CI um, continuous integration testing on Travis, um, and there should be stable releases. Um, 
there's some other kind of fuzzier guidelines, uh, things about not having hyphens in the name of the workflow. Um, also, some stuff about like being not too big and not too small. The cancer white pipeline, which I mentioned briefly, uh, was one of the ones where we thought it was too big, it was too complicated, and it kind of wasn't consistent with the other pipelines, so that's separate. Um, Alex added a pipeline early on that wor only worked on AWS with data, which was on AWS, and we decided that that wasn't generic enough because you couldn't run it everywhere. So there's, there's kind of fuzzier guidelines like that, and it's been an ongoing process this whole year of writing these. Every time we kind of come to a decision as a group, we try and write that down on the website. All right, let's see a demo. Um, you want to create your new pipeline. That's good news for you. You don't have to start completely from scratch because we've built um, a template um, for NF Core pipelines, uh, which builds on earlier work that I started back at the NGI and, and then has been kind of developed by lots of people over the last year with what we have considered to be kind of best practices. Um, is it going to play? Oh, that's the best one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, can I fix it on the fly? That's really, really fun. Yeah, I'll just pause it when it's finished. <laughs> um, so this is really tiny text. Sorry for messing this up. Um, what we've done here is we've said NF core create. So NF core is the, the name in the Python package, and then there's a bunch of different subcommands. Um, so create is to make a new pipeline using the template. Uh, then there's a few different prompts here, which it's asked me. So I've typed in a name. Uh, I've put in a description and I've given my name as an author. Uh, and basically then it takes the, uh, the template, which is a pretty simple template using cookie cutter. So as these kind of ginger style um, squiggly bracket variable substitution. Uh, so it creates a new pipeline uh, and then it puts it into a folder and it initializes a, a Git repository here, which I'll go into why we do that in a second. Uh, and it tells us that we're done uh, with a couple of instructions. Hopefully the next ones will work. Uh, if we look in the directory it's created, we can see that it's made lots of files, which are hopefully familiar to everybody uh, if you've been working on them this morning. So we've got our main um, kind of pipeline file here. We've got a config file, and we've got a bunch of other stuff to kind of go along with it. And many of these files are pretty kind of boilerplate, so you, hopefully you won't really ever need to touch them again. Um, if we do git log, you can see that, as, uh, as promised, it initialized a git repository in this folder and created an initial commit. Um, and if we start looking at the files, you can see that they're pretty, especially the main one has got lots of kind of standardized code. It's basically a mini, mini pipeline that just runs FastQC and MultiQC. Uh, and if you look for these strings, you can see this is a, a new update that um, we only actually merged as I was putting these slides together a couple of days ago. But we now have these strings all through the template uh, where we say to do NF core. So hopefully that will flag up nicely in your text editor. And so now you can just go through this newly created template and all these to-do flags will show you the things that you have to change. So that hopefully gets you started really nice and quick. Um, if I go to another pipeline I've already made, and I can show another, another tool that uh, is part of this, a subtool. This one is called lint instead of create. And this runs tests for all of the guidelines that we've set, plus lots of other things. Um, so this is on the, the methyl, methylation pipeline. And you can see that the 80 different tests have passed, and I had one warning. This tests lots of things. Primarily, it's the Nextflow config file. Um, and then also, if you're using Bioconda, it can use the Conda API and stuff. So here, it's told me that um, there's a new version of Picard, which I could update. But this is just a warning, not a failure. Uh, if it had found any of those to-do strings, uh, then they would turn up as warnings. So the first time you run this on a vanilla one, you'll get like 30 different warnings because you'll find all the to-do strings. Um, and there are many, many different types of, of things that it searches for. Basically, whenever any of us make a mistake, which twice, we try and write a new lint test for it. Um, and if you click on the little link that comes up at the start of everyone, it takes you to the website where we have a bit more documentation about each kind of class of test. So here it says, this is error number eight. It was something to do with the Conda check going wrong. This is what we do, and, and this, this is what constitutes a failure or a warning. 
So as you build your new pipeline, you keep running NF core lint, uh, and it keeps telling you what, what's wrong, and hopefully it never gets overwhelming. Also important is when you push your code to GitHub, uh, the tests on Travis will be triggered, uh, and they run this same lint command. And so if there are any failures from the linting, then that will show up on your pull request and we'll ask you to fix them before we merge. Synchronization. So I said we have something like 16 different pipelines now, and hopefully all of these have at least a very strong resemblance with that template. Um, what happens if we, there's a new feature in Nextflow that we want to make use of, or there's some boilerplate code which we think could be done in a better way, we'd have to go out and change every single one of those 16 pipelines, which is not going to scale. It's not going to be possible for long. So this year, we've been thinking about this idea of kind of automatic or semi-automatic synchronization of pipelines a lot. Um, so now you can see this is the initial commit that the, the template, the create command made for us. Um, it does it so that you don't forget to do it. And this initial commit is, is vanilla. It's just run the template uh, and there's no modifications. We can then go and use git normally as you would and start coding your pipeline. And maybe far in the future when we next do a release of the template uh, in a new version of a tools package, we automatically using a bot on GitHub, which is triggered by a script within Travis, um, adds to a separate branch and we fork from this initial commit and we completely delete all the files there and run the template create command a second time with the new version of tools. And so now between here, hopefully we should have a diff of what changed in the template. We can then open a pull request against the, the main branch uh, and hopefully, because Git is magic, um, only the things which have changed in the template will be tried to be applied within your code. And what's really nice is you can keep doing this. So we can keep doing new releases along here and you can keep doing as much coding along here and each time there's a new release, we can do a new pull request. And again, in theory, just the changes in a template which are relevant to your pipeline will be applied. Sorry? Yes, exactly. We spent quite a long time thinking about really clever ways we could do this and did some Googling and realized that someone else had already solved it for us. That's great. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Um, and this has pr primarily been dr driven by Sven, who you mentioned earlier, and also uh, Johannes and my group spent a lot of time on this in the summer. Um, we, this is still pretty new. We tested this from the release that we did yesterday, two days ago, and it seemed to successfully work on the two pipelines. Um, so there's a caveat that we haven't tested it very much and it might not work as well as I hope it to. Uh, and there's a caveat that you probably need to do lots of merge conflicts at least the first few times, but hopefully after that it'll be pretty easy. Um, and finally, there's a caveat that this really only works if you have this base commit which, uh, where you can fork from. We have been, lots of, most, most of our pipelines don't have this at the moment, so we have been through figuring out a way to do an initial um, merge across here without shared history and then it does work from that point onwards but that first step is very manual and kind of a pain. So if possible, uh, even if you've already written your own pipeline, just start with a template, start with that initial commit and then paste in your code and then your life will be much easier in the future. Uh, yeah, this is some screenshots that Sven sent. So this is our NF core bot account on GitHub and it's automatically uh, opened a pull request against the HLA typing pipeline and says that there's been a, a new release, version 1.3 of the tools package and template. Um, and then this should be one commit, hopefully. Uh, and you can go in and you can see that in the Travis config file, this is just boilerplate code change, uh, which is common in the template and it's trying to apply them for us automatically. I've taken a lot of inspiration from other po um, projects when we've done this, so Conda Forge uh, is amazing at doing this. Uh, and Bioconda, and, and these projects have been a big source of inspiration as to how to build a community around GitHub. So when you look at NF core pipelines, all NF core pipelines should have at least three branches. Uh, we have the template one that we've just discussed, which is used only for synchronization of a template. Um, we have master, which should only contain, always contain the commits from the last release. This is so that if you run um, Nextflow run pipeline name, by default, you'll get stable um, code from the last release. 
Um, and then we obviously do GitHub tagged releases as well. Um, and then all ongoing development work should be in the dev branch. Uh, some of the tests that run on Travis and stuff check for these things. So if you try and open a pull request from your fork directly against master, it will immediately fail. Um, only pull requests from dev are allowed on the master branch. Uh, and when a new pipeline is introduced for the first time, you'll go away and work on it by yourself a lot to get it up and running. Uh, and then when you're, you say it's ready to be released for the first time, we do one big community uh, group review of your code. And this happened most re recently with um, the pipeline Deep variant, which was released a few days ago. Uh, and so we make like a pseudo pull request where we take what will be the released code and compare that back to the very initial commit. So basically we see all code, but it gives us an interface on GitHub where we can make comments and, and chat. Uh, and then we can have that kind of iterative process of updates, which works so beautifully on GitHub. Um, there was a lot of comments. <laughs> so uh, try not to be intimidated by this. Hopefully it means that the code ends up being really bomber. Uh, and and this, this code I'm really, I've got a lot of confidence in because we've run it uh, on other systems, other people have, multiple other people have looked at the code. Uh, and this, this process really gets that kind of um, production level code. And of course, hopefully, does actually end in a nice release. Um, you don't have to remember all of this. Um, again, on the website, there's uh, under developers, you'll find a page which was written relatively recently describing all of these steps, basically. Uh, and this kind of aspect of documentation is something we're constantly trying to work on because I think it's really critical. So, hopefully you feel inspired. <laughs> um, hopefully you've thought of a a niche where we don't already have an NF core pipeline uh, and you, you know exactly what you want to run and you would love for the community at large to be able to use it. Uh, and if so, it's pretty easy to get involved. Uh, the first place to check out is the website. Go and look at it and have a, have a poke around and read. Familiarize yourself with it. Um, we have an email list, which I don't think has been used at all yet, <laughs> but is there if you want it. Uh, um, primarily, we've been using Gitter for chat, the same as Nextflow. Uh, which gets a lot of traffic now. Um, we, of course, have a GitHub repository. So when you're ready, uh, if you go and find, um, there's, there's something written about it on the web page, but there's a place where there's an issue where you can say, please add me, and we will add you uh, to the GitHub organization. And then you'll have all the permissions you need to do reviewing and adding pipelines and everything else to the, to the repositories. And of course, hackathons are a, a great place to, to get involved. Um, little side note. We've been getting slightly frustrated with Gitter because it's a single stream of messages and it's been kind of difficult. You come in after a couple of days away and there's like 300 messages. Um, and so we're thinking hard about transitioning to Slack instead. Um, that had a problem that you have to get an invite, but we think we've worked that out by having a little script where you type in your email address and you automatically get an invite. So stay tuned. We're probably going to change to Slack pretty soon. Uh, but again, it'll be on the website. Um, and with relation to hackathons, uh, we've had three in the calendar so far. Um, so we in, had this kind of unofficial one in August, which originally was just going to be a couple of people from, from our team. But then I mentioned it on Gitter, and suddenly we got a really good group of people together for a week. And it was fantastic. We're still kind of finishing up some of the things that were, were coded then. Uh, we, of course, have, uh, but that's gone. <laughs> we, of course, have the next flow hackathon. Perfect place, you're already here. Um, and then next year, uh, Alex and, and Sven uh, over in Tübingen, Germany are gonna organize another NF Core Hackathon in, in April. Um, so details will be going out as soon, as soon as they're ready for that. With that, I'd like to wrap up. Um, the talk is about a community project, so obviously it's not just me. <laughs> There's a huge number of people involved in all this work, uh, both in the initial kickoff work at, at the NGI with me, um, also, uh, Tubingham and Singapore and, and Paolo has been instrumental in this. Um, so there's lots of people, there's many more people who deserve to be on this slide. Um, but uh, if you want to get in touch with me, that's where you can find me. Um, little side notes. Uh, oh no, this is a hackathon picture from the summer. So these are the people who turned up on one, at least one of the days, <laughs> uh, which is really a lot of fun. So I'd like to thank them for the work they put in. 
Uh, I'm putting a little side note that um, I haven't talked about any of this stuff today, but I've been involved in all these projects. So if you're interested, come and grab me in a, uh, in a coffee break. Um, maybe interesting for some of you is SARAC, which is a, a pipeline we've developed for doing cancer analysis primarily. So it works on uh, just whole genome analysis, also somatic analysis, comparison between tumor normal um, and exomes and other things. Uh, I have stickers for MultiQC, SARAC, and NFCore and other stuff, which I brought with me. So uh, you can just stick her up. Um, yeah, and final slide. We're about to put out a job advert. <laughs> so if you're in the market, check out our brand new Enjoy Sweden Twitter account. And, uh, and yeah, it would be great to see some of you in play. And with, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions if we've got time. Okay.